Hello, good people of YouTube. Now I'm Ben here, and today we're going to be going over the Agir and the second impression review of her. So, the Agir, the Tier 9 German Premium Super Cruiser. This is by far the easier one to obtain. Uh, the Siegfried, of course, you either have to sacrifice your stash of free XP, which, I mean, again, if you're like a player like me who has been playing for three plus years, you probably have enough to get most of the way done with the Siegfried, or you could get the Agir for one million free XP. So, the Agir, she's pretty good, as I said in the first impression review, and that review, I actually, when I recorded the commentary for that one, that was about a day or so after I actually had done the first impressions review, but I hadn't had time to edit it all together and such because, again, I'm going on vacation next week, but should be this week when this video is coming out, so things got a little jumbled up there. But what I said in that video still remains mostly true. There are some corrections I want to make after playing her a bit more since that video, and that is I kind of overstated the consistency of her main battery guns. They are very consistent, don't get me wrong, but I think I made it sound a little bit too good to be true. And her guns are consistent. Again, they aren't very, very consistent, but they aren't, you know, every dispersion's perfect, and it, the shells do on occasion kind of spread out, but less than other super cruisers. It's very similar to the Alaska in that in those regards. But again, you know, the Agir and the Siegfried, they don't get Alaska's special pin angles and things like that. But her dispersion is good and between the Siegfried and the Agir, Agir would be the more consistent performer. And that's been my experience so far too. With Siegfried, you know, Siegfried's more of a Mimi ship. It's a very good ship, but Agir is more of the constant performer, if you will. Now, her 305 millimeter guns, they are some heavy hitters when you have some nice targets to shoot at. Absolutely will delete most, well, not delete, but will smack the crap out of most cruisers if they goof up in front of you. And I've been doing that consistently with the gear. The video in the first impressions um, video that match was, I think, my third match in the gear when that happened. And I've had similar matches to that since then. Again, it depends a lot on, you know, the teams, how skilled the other team, you know. Are they going to go for straight potato and show you their broadside, this and that. Now, in the Siegfried, you do kind of need those potato teams for the ship to really, really stretch its legs. Where in the gear, you can always fall back onto your HE. Nine three hundred five millimeter guns with an under twenty second reload time, depending upon your build, is a very potent HE spammer. Um, you know, not like small lens or anything, but its HE is quite potent if you need to fall back on it. With the Siegfried, you can't really fall back on it that much. But I'm I am happy to report that she is still, for the most part, what I said in my first impressions videos, that mostly still holds true. She's a very good ship. She's been performing very well. And, again, she's a pretty tough ship. She's not as tough as something like the Puerto Rico, obviously. But as far as the Tier 9 Super Cruisers go, I would put her on the tougher side. She is pretty chunky. Again, if you've played German battleships, you know what to expect. The armor is very good at close range, but at range, you eat pens left, right, and center. Um, even Musashi and Yami shells, they've surprisingly, a lot of times, the, the, the armor does a pretty good job of bouncing them. And what's really funny too is if they aim, if they uh, aim at your upper belt like you would do on most German battleships to get the juicy pins, it actually they, uh, they're actually overpin you. Yeah, that's been funny. And the first time it happened, I thought for sure I was going to get deleted in the uh, gear, but it was pretty funny watching a full Yami broadside overpin me. It's still hard. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it freaking hurt, but it's, it was better than getting deleted. But again, if you angle right, you know you can bounce anything if you know how to angle properly. The ship is also pretty good at kiting, although I haven't done a tremendous amount of kiting in the uh, gear. It's mostly just been hit W and watch what happens. But if you do have to kite, the ship's pretty good at that. The turret angles are pretty good for kiting. And again, the HE is really consistent and really potent for that. So that is definitely something you can do in the ship. The torpedoes, again, the gear has a superior torpedo angles than the Siegfried. 
but they are on the deck, so they get knocked out a little bit more than the uh, Siegfried's torpedoes do. So they have the better angles. Again, they are Turpid's torpedoes, and it is hilarious to use them against uh, against other ships. And it really does make this ship uh, quite the potent brawler. I mean, would I recommend you go after every tier 10 battleship you see? You see? No. But if you do, if, uh, but if it does come down to you having to charge a tier 10 battleship, you know that you can, if you get a couple good salvos in with your broadside, um, you can uh, you can put a slapping on them pretty good with the Aguirre. And the Aguirre's guns are capable of penetrating citadels of some tier 10 BBs. You gotta be pretty close though. I citadeled, I believe that's the match you're watching now. I do manage to citadel Musashi for about 35,000 damage. That, that, that felt free and good. But again, I was also like six kilometers away, which again, the Aguirre is a pretty good ship for throwing yourself into those situations. But I mean, it's it's, it's a pretty good ship. I'm not gonna lie, I'm enjoying it. Is it as good as the Alaska? Uh, I still don't think so. I would choose Alaska over this ship. If I had to put the tier nine super cruisers in order, it would definitely be like Alaska, Aguirre, then um, probably Kronstadt, then Azuma. But the ship feels good, and it does feel nice for the Germans to finally have their own super cruisers. And they and they got two of them. They got two really good ones. It's not like the Japanese where we got the Azuma and the Yush and the Oshino. And the Oshino is just you know leagues better than the uh, than the Azuma. I really like it because the the Siegfried and the Aguirre they're so similar, but they do have their different play styles and their own unique feeling between the two of them. So back to the question of is it worth the million free XP or the seventy seven dollars? And after playing it a bit more, I would say it's most definitely worth the 1 million free XP uh, price. Because, again, it's so much fun. And I do imagine this will probably be a pretty competitive ship. When I think they're doing... is it, I think ranked sprints this time around in Tier 9. Or I think they're talking about doing clan battles at Tier 9 or something like that. I do have a feeling a gear will be a pretty solid choice depending upon what happens with the Riga, because if you guys haven't seen the Riga, that, that, that ship's pretty, whew, that ship's pretty oomphy too, oh, but the Aguirre can deal with the Riga pretty well, uh, as well, but I do feel this will be the more competitive to, uh, the more competitive between the, um, Siegfried and the Aguirre, because the Siegfried, again, it's kind of like you're rolling the dice if you know where to aim, um, you will be able to delete cruisers, but when you get into the competitive situations where people are angling and stuff and keeping their correct positioning, it's going to be a bit harder to deal with those ships. But the Aguirre, I do imagine, will be making an appearance in whatever super competitive tier 9 mode they throw it into. So, I would go with the Aguirre, um, personally, to the average player again. But is it worth the $77, though? Because, again, $70 is a pretty high cost to pay for a digital item and again I would say it is up to you but I'm actually leaning more toward yes this time because the ship is a lot of fun it's not like it's just a you know competitive ship to where it's very good in my competitive mode and nothing else but the ship is also really fun um, again if, you, if you're used to playing German battleships and you say you like the Ganesa now or you like the Scharnhorst this is basically a tier 9 Scharnhorst honestly but not quite as tough with the armor because it does only have the 27 millimeter balance during that is a downside of the ship. But if you're used to playing the Scharnhorst, if you're used to playing German battleships, this is kind of along the same lines. Except, you know, you actually have accurate guns at range, which is really nice to have on a German ship with large guns. Um, it's a pretty fun ship. I'm not going to lie. I've had, a lot, I've had a blast in it. Um, and I do think it will be fun for most players, even the average player up to the Super Unicum. It's a good ship, so I would recommend that you get it, be it the million dollars or the, or the million dollars, not at a million dollars, be it the million free XP or the seventy dollars. I feel it's a good buy either way. Alright guys, that's my second impression video for the Agir. Good ship, fun ship, worth the million dollars, again, million dollars, million free XP or the cash in my opinion at least. If you want to spend the, the cash, that's up to you. It's your money. You do what you want with it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you're staying safe and healthy during these times. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We are on our way to 15,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. You guys hope you're staying safe and hope to catch you guys in the next one.